Mats Matu. We are the children, we are the children, the children of God. Tam Kam Kam. We change our world, we have what it takes to do it smart and make it smart. Welcome to our Smart Do. Hello, children. Welcome back to another exciting episode. This is a, a standard six on learning social studies. We are looking at an uh, interesting topic known as law, peace, and conflict resolution. Okay. Now, as we start, we need to understand uh, what do we mean by the term law. Okay. Whereby we have our lawyers in Kenya using the term law. Okay. Now. Law is a set of rules used in governing of a country. Okay? So laws are rules set or laid down by the parliament, with the government, okay, to govern the country. Okay? Uh, the second term that we have is what we call peace. Okay? Peace. So the first term law means rules. Okay? Law means these are rules laid down by a country. Okay? The second term known as peace. What do you mean by peace? Peace is a state of a country whereby uh, there is no disagreement or any conflict. Okay? That is what we call peace. Maintaining peace. It's a, it's a state of calmness. Okay? All you can say is a state of calmness. When a state or a country is calm, there is no war. That's what we call peace. Okay? The second, the other term we could have is what we call conflict. What do you mean by conflict? Conflict, these are disagreements. Okay? When two parties or two members or two individuals disagree, that's what we call a conflict. People are in conflict. They don't agree to what, uh, whatever the, the issue is. Okay? So conflict is an issue of disagreement, oh, okay? So conflict is an issue of uh, disagreement. Now, the other term known as conflict, resolution. So this is whereby you solve. This is a matter of setting disputes or setting the disagreement, okay? So conflict is disagreement. Resolution is settling the conflict, okay, or the issue. So this is about it's a matter of settling disputes. Settling of disputes. Okay? So that's those are the meanings as we start to learn the various items. Okay? That's why I wanted we first of all start with the introductory part. Now we are going to look at peace and basically we look at the other factors. Uh, and uh, factors that are promote peace. Which are the factors that promote peace in our country? Okay, so looking at the factors that promote peace. So, what are the factors, the underlying factors that promote peace in our country? Okay, let us look at the factors or things. What are the things? that bring about peace in our country. For example, Kenya has been a peaceful country for some time. And so we need to look at what are the things that have brought peace in our country, okay? Number one has been dialogue, okay? Okay, for example, when the teachers decide to strike uh, because of the poor pay by the government, the government decides, no, let us have a dialogue, okay? So this is where the government calls the the, the teachers, the, the people in charge of teaching, uh, the NAT bosses, okay, the TSE commission, they sit down and decide to have what we call a dialogue. Dialogue is where people might sit down and decide to look at those disagreements and settle the issues of concern that they are and having. That is what we call dialogue. So dialogue is the state upon which uh, individuals or members decide to settle those disputes by sitting down and looking at the various issues. Another one is uh, equal distribution of resources. Okay? Equal distribution of resources. So 
So when resources are distributed equally, it will promote peace. Because unfairness or unfair distribution of resources will bring out war. But if the resources are distributed equally, it will bring about peace in our country. Okay? So number three agenda is what we call the games and sports. Okay? Games and sports, they really bring about interaction, okay? For example, the games that we have, the football matches, bring people together. So games and sports, the various games and sports bring people together. Number four, that we have is obedience to the law, okay? When you avoid the rules, and the regulation, the laws of the country. There will be no quarrel, there will be no there will be no disagreement, there will be no dispute, there will be no conflict. Okay? When the law is obeyed, there will be peace in our country. Because there will be no people confronting each other because there's a law that is set and people when they obey the law, the government or the country will run smoothly. The other one is about respecting others. When people respect each other, we'll have peace. Actually, people, when the people dis disrespect or they do not respect one another, it brings about war and conflict. Okay? So these are about the five items that promote peace in our country. So these are among the items that promote peace in our country. So let us look at something else known as other factors undermining peace. Okay? Factors that undermine peace. Which are the factors undermining peace? Okay. Let's look at the factors that undermine peace. Okay. Which are these factors that undermine peace? Number one, we have political intolerance. Okay. Why we have political? Intolerance. So what do you mean by political intolerance? Political intolerance is about when a country, in terms of politics, whereby, for example, there was, a, there was political instability in our country in the year 2007, whereby two parties did not agree on the results, on the outcome of, of the election. What happened? Uh, what happened is that the two, the party that did not agree defeat, led to what we, we had, uh, like a conflict that brought war, a sort of a war in our country, whereby it was not a good idea. So political intolerance, politics, the, uh, uh, instability or intolerance brings about uh, that conflict in our country. So which is which is a factor that does not promote peace in our country. Okay. Number two, that we have. That is of major importance. Another one is religious differences. Now, people of different uh, uh, religious differences, um, they do not agree on some certain uh, faith, bringing about uh, commotion and conflict and war. For example, there was a fight uh, here at Kajiado between the Christian and the Muslims. Whereby, due to the reasons of faith, they could not agree, bringing about conflict. And number three, we have an equal distribution of resources. Like I said, when the resources are, are distributed unfair, it will bring about war. Okay? So, people, when they do not agree, it's not good. Another one that would bring is unemployment. When people are not employed, they are not working. So these people, what would they do if they do not work? They bring about crime and other factors. Number five, we have is what we call competition. Okay, competition is another factor. The people who like to compete one against the other. Okay, and uh, finally. I want to look at things that promote peace. What promotes peace? Factors that promote peace very quickly. Factors that promote peace. 
which are the factors that promote peace. Okay? Number one, factor that promote peace. Or factor of the importance of peace. What I can say is importance. Importance. Number one, importance of peace. Peace. People are able to work freely. Okay? Number two, we have what we call the safety of children. Children are able to be safe. Number three factor that we have is that it's able to attract tourists. Number four, that it could do is that it's able to improve living of improve living standards of people. Number five, finally, it's, as, it's able to promote fast growth. Thank you so much. Have a blessed day.